otherwise known as the McLaren fax machine. I don't know who decided to give it that name. The car, but put on steroids. It was just amped up. Everything that could be covered in Alcantara got covered in Alcantara. Hey, my name is Andy, and today we're gonna be doing underrated, overrated McLaren edition. Let's go. Now McLaren has a long and interesting history. So to keep this video brief, I'm not gonna cover all of them. I'm just gonna cover their most noteworthy and interesting ones, starting with the McLaren F1. Now the McLaren F1 is the world's first true hypercar. Incredible, used a V12 from BMW. This car has so many little quirks and features as Doug DeMuro would put it, including three seats, as well as a gold lined engine bay. Now the gold was used because of the enormous amount of heat generated from that BMW. V12. Another little fun fact about the McLaren F1 is the butterfly doors were actually taken from the Toyota Serra. Yeah, the Toyota Serra little hatchback is where the McLaren designer got his inspiration for the McLaren F1. That's insane. And the McLaren F1 is absolutely an underrated car. Now, next up, we have the Mercedes McLaren SLR. Now, this was a joint venture between McLaren and Mercedes, and it was around the time when they used to make Formula One cars together. McLaren used to build the bodies, and Mercedes would provide the engines for the cars that Lewis Hamilton ultimately won his first world championship in. The McLaren SLR was kind of a combination of that for the road, where Mercedes and McLaren worked together to produce this car. What a truly incredible car it was, and still is, and it can still run with some of the best performance cars from today. Beautiful looking car, mental performance, shitty transmission, but I mean, you got to forgive it because that's just kind of the, the gearboxes that they had in the day. Torque converter automatic, five speed, very sluggish, but you, you get what I mean. I'm not going to keep banging on about that point, but the Mercedes SLR is absolutely underrated. Now, next up, we have the McLaren MP4 12C, otherwise known as the McLaren fax machine. I don't know who decided to give it that name absolutely ridiculous name, but the car was truly great. Now the 12C and the 12C Spider was McLaren's first attempt at producing supercars on mass. I want to say on mass. They weren't mass produced, but you know, the first true car that McLaren developed and sold on its own. It did have its niggles. It had reliability problems, but overall, I got to say the McLaren 12C was correctly rated. Now next up, we have the McLaren 570S, otherwise known to Stradman fans as the Baby Mac. The 570S was the McLaren you bought when you got sick of your 911 and you wanted something a bit more lively. 3.3 seconds to 100, twin turbo V8, double clutch gearbox. The 570S was a truly incredible car and I think it was actually quite underrated. Now next up, we have the McLaren 650S. Now the 650S was actually the replacement for the 12C, kind of built upon what the 12C had started and just improved it in every way. So you had you know better performance much better reliability i think it looked a lot nicer and kind of made the 12c look a bit boring you're boring everybody i think the 650s was the first mclaren to truly receive mso mclaren special operations treatment and they came out with cars such as the 650s can-am which they made only 50 of and i think the can-am is one of the most beautiful cars that McLaren has done, and it's a tribute to the Can-Am's race series that McLaren used to participate in. The McLaren 650S is absolutely underrated. Next up, we've got the McLaren 675 LT. The 675 LT is the long tail version of the 650S. The car, but put on steroids. It was just amped up. It was just that much more, I don't know, involving. Give it more power, more aggressive looks, better driving dynamics, and then go, here you go. And the McLaren 675 LT is truly underrated. Now, next up, we have the McLaren 720S. I think the 720S is a very unique car. The designers designed the 720S to look like a shark. Yeah, and I think they actually did quite a good job at that comparison. Around the headlights of the 720, you have these big air ducts that feed into the brakes and cooling system. And I think that that is just so bizarre and so unique. And the thing I love about the 720, and all McLarens in fact, is they have those really thin headlights and really thin brake lights especially. And they just kind of integrated it into the bodywork. Makes the cars look like spaceships. Overall, it is also a very underrated car. The only thing I don't really like about these McLarens, all of the McLarens in fact, is they all have really boring interiors. <laughs> Your basic bog standard McLaren will have Alcantara absolutely everywhere. Now Alcantara is great when it's used sparingly, you know, a little bit on the steering wheel, a bit on the dash, but McLaren use it everywhere. And I mean, everywhere. Everything that could be covered in Alcantara got covered in Alcantara. And the problem with that is it's gray, it's boring, and there's no real soul and passion to it. And I know that sounds all wishy-washy, but it's true. You step into a Lamborghini, you step into a Ferrari, you've got the beautiful leather, the stitch work. It's just a beautiful place to sit. When you sit in a McLaren, you're just sitting in Alcantara. 
I think, you know, if you're gonna get one of these cars, you've gotta get it with the leather seats because then you can get the cool stitching in it and then it starts to feel a little bit more special. That's my view on it. I've kind of gone on a tangent there. Next up, we've got the McLaren 765 LT. I think straight out of the gate, this car is correctly rated. It's another long tail version, yes. And it builds on the 720, yes, but I don't think it's that much more than a 720. A 720 is already blisteringly fast. And I did read about the 765 before making this video. It does have performance gains. It is a better car overall. The 720, 765, they're very kind of similar cars at the end of the day. It's not underrated, absolutely not overrated. The 765, correctly rated. Next up, we've got the McLaren GT. Now, I think that this is a very interesting category. You're starting to see a lot of supercar manufacturers coming out with GT series cars. So we've got McLaren's GT, Porsche's 911 has always kind of been a GT car. But then you also have the new Ferrari, Roma's now a GT car. You've got the new Koenigsegg Jamira. I think that the McLaren GT, I think it's a little bit overrated. Now that's because for the same kind of money in the same ballpark, I think that the 911 is a better option. And I also think that the Ferrari Roma is a better option. Not to say that the McLaren is necessarily a bad car, but it is definitely an overrated car. Next up, we've got the McLaren P1. I think that the McLaren P1 is it's a correctly rated car. The fact that they used hybrid technology to enhance the internal combustion engine was actually quite hilarious. MSO did a whole number of um, special options on this car. They did some really cool ones. Manny Koshbin, they did one for Jensen Button. Oh, and they even did one for Lewis Hamilton. The P1 is a great car. Clarkson, of course, drove this car on the Grand Tour and he had to say- They should have called this the Widowmaker. So I think the McLaren P1 is a correctly rated car. Next up, we've got the McLaren Senna. Now in my last video, I said the Senna was overrated. McLaren Senna, overrated. In this video, I stick by that. The Senna is a little bit overrated. It has great track time performance, but for the money, there are a lot of better cars out there. You're better off in even a 765 LT or a 720. I don't really see the huge, incredible leap between that car and say a Senna, but I do see the value of a P1. So that's why the P1 is correctly rated. The Senna, it's still overrated. Next up, we have the McLaren Speedtail. Again, in the last video, I said the Speedtail was overrated. And in this video, I want to say correctly rated because I did look more into this car and the fact that it uses the three-seater design from the original F1 as kind of, you know, a nod to that and the fact that they're just going for out and out speed with this car with the wheel covers you've got the cockpit style start button in the roof the speed tail is a correctly rated car now last but not least we've got the mclaren artura yet to be delivered and yet to be fully confirmed but i still think that the artura is an underrated car if we get the same kind of blistering performance that we're used to from mclaren i think that the artura can be a really underrated mclaren the p1 was kind of just a hybrid to boost the efficiency of the petrol engine where the Artura is truly a standalone hybrid car and I'm curious to see you know what they can do with it the price point it sits at and all the kind of details behind the car but for right now I'm going to say that the Artura is underrated so overall I think that McLaren as a brand is actually relatively underrated see the thing is McLaren have very high sticker prices as do Ferrari and Lamborghini but they depreciate like lead in a swimming pool and buying a secondhand McLaren can actually be a really good idea. They've done all that depreciation, but they still have ludicrous performance and they actually don't get driven all that often where you can see something like a Ferrari California getting a lot of miles put on it, but a lot of McLarens are still under the 5,000 km mark after five to six years. I think that's a really great opportunity. The cars are not appreciated, I think, as much as they should be, and therefore McLaren as a brand is quite underrated. Now, do you agree with my ratings? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.